I want to talk about money. <clears throat> now, I'm willing, but I don't want to win the lottery. I want to be not afraid about money. I have a middle-class life, comfortable. But you would think when I'm spending $15 for parking that I was destitute. <laughs> and there's three topics intermingled. Uh, money, self-worth, and spirituality. Yesterday, what I heard, I don't know if it's what was said, but what I heard... It doesn't matter what was said. It only was, matters what you heard. ...was talking about sexuality. And it's like, you can't be spiritual and sexually active. That was the beginning premise, but that's not right. the way it is. Yeah. Right. So for me, it's like, you can't be spiritual and have money. A lot of people feel that way. Now, that does not appear to be your problem. So, so, this will be easy for you to hear too because you've already found so much resonance with the basics of the laws of the universe that this will be easy for you to find resonance with. You've heard us say so many times that you were source energy and that a part of you came here into this body. And then you hear us say that this is the leading edge. This is the leading edge of all of this. This isn't the proving ground, this physical world. It isn't the trial ground. It isn't what so many in a state of confusion have made it out to be. This is the environment where vibrations turn to thoughts and thoughts turn to things. Things that can be interpreted through the physical senses. And so this is the result of all of this spirituality. This is the result of all of this source energy. All of this abundance is the result of all of this energy that is allowed or created or at the root of this abundance. And so sometimes people worry that if they are involved in something that earns money that they may not be spiritual because they want to associate struggle and sacrifice with spirituality and that is the biggest flawed premise that they begin with because there is no shortage consciousness in source source is extending abundance and abundant vibrations and abundant thoughts to everyone it's like raining down on all of you but many have a resistant sort of shield up because they have that flawed premise and so you just have to sort of prove it to yourself yes you said the word sacrifice yesterday and you just mentioned it again because what? people think there's no gain without pain and so forth and yes. one of our masters spiritual masters sacrificed in the Abrahamic religion. And I think that's where I'm tied up in. You have to willingly give up to give service to others. You're talking about Jesus? Yeah. It's interesting how humans who weren't thinking about alignment or not speak so much more about a state of misalignment than all of the alignment and all of the message that flowed in that state of alignment. That's what we're talking about when you try to learn teachings that have been written that weren't in your time, that weren't written to you, that weren't written about your questions. You have all of this that's flowing directly to you and yet people want to dig up some form of something that was all those thousands of years ago and make it some how apply to them and then in the generations that follow and the translations that follow the misunderstanding of the reinterpretation of it there was never a time that this consciousness that you in this moment are naming Jesus proclaimed that he was always in alignment with that ever and yet that's the way humans tell the story and so they tell a story in a way that is flawed and then you all measure yourself against a flawed story and then wonder why you can't accomplish that <laughs> words do not teach and source energy does not stop flowing 
with one teacher. There's another teacher and another teacher and another teacher and another teacher. And all of you have access to this love and clarity and enlightenment that's being offered to you at all times, you see. And so it's such a nice thing when you allow yourself a quieting of your mind, which puts to rest for a moment beliefs that aren't serving you and allows you a personal connection to this loving, glorious consciousness of source where you discover your own worthiness, your own value, your own connection with all that is good. Humans have discovered and they continue to perpetuate it with each other. This real flaw in their thinking is a shortage consciousness that says there's only so much prosperity to go around. They think incorrectly that it's a finite amount. And then they squabble over how much you get and how much you get. And if you get it, then I can't get it. Not understanding that this evolution of abundance expands proportionately to the asking. So the more who are suffering in not enough abundance, the more abundance is created because it is true. When you ask whoever you are, it is given. But the question is, are you in a state that is allowing what you've asked for to come in? Or do you believe that you have to follow impossible rituals that have been passed on from generations in a not true way of understanding in order to be worthy. It's such an interesting thing to watch people pinching themselves off from the very source that they want to be with in order to prove their worthiness to be with that source. It's interesting that for so many humans, you've actually come to a place where you have rendered your own guidance system ineffective because you say, if it feels good, it isn't. And if it feels like sacrifice, it's good. And we say, uh-oh. <laughs> because your inner being is offering you love and you say, I must be doing something wrong. This feels too good. And when you're suffering, you say, see God, I'm following your work. And that was never what was being offered. And if you could speak to Jesus directly, and you are, and you are same family of teachers and you are what you would hear is as you're standing in front dripping your illness don't talk about that go forth and tell no one don't keep active within you something that is blocking the wellness that is potentially within you as you now know what you know you can receive clarity about all of those things that are confusing. Can't you feel someone who's tuned in to source energy? And can't you feel someone who's in the receptive mode of defensiveness? Isn't hate obvious to see? And isn't love obvious to see? How can a belief that you've picked up along your physical trail cause you to deny your own experience? Well, that's what we've been talking about all these hours that we've been together. Words don't teach. And the only way you're going to know is to find some way of disengaging from those beliefs that are in your way. And not everything you believe is in your way. You believe a lot of things that are beneficial to you. There is so much in religious teachings that is right on. But you, once you connect on a regular basis, would be able to read those texts and feel the resonance of what source knows to be and what man has made up from his defensive and protective state. Almost every religious text has come through many hands of economic leaders who have adjusted for the economic value, not for the spiritual understanding. There is no teacher who has been accurately or for very long at all expressed further. That's why Source doesn't count on a teacher or a leader. Source gives it to everyone, to everyone, to everyone. 
unlimited abundance and knowledge and well-being and source energy and flow. It's not just funneled through a few who might get up in a bad mood and say something entirely different from what source said. We've been talking about that already, you see.